Uh, this is a version of a talk that I actually gave last year on, on, on a more momentous occasion, which was when I actually had been using Emacs for 30 years. So I've now been using Emacs for 31 years, shy, I guess, of four weeks, uh, or maybe even a little less than four weeks. Um, so, uh, good evening. Pardon? Can you go back? Can I go back? <laughs> I'll give you my slides. They're, the, the PDF no, works so much to, better. I want to post it on, on social media. media. So okay, here. Post it, post it on social media. Yes. Yes. The test. yes. As, it, as it turns out, though, I can give you the actual PDF. Yeah, okay. Yes. But then I might have to cut and paste a picture of you in next to it. Very good. Anyway, so as I said, I, I learned Emacs in September 1983, and it's now August of 2014, so it's about 31 years, which is, which is kind of amazing to me. Uh, why would anyone use a program that long? I, I won't say why would anyone in their right mind use a program <laughs> that long, because there might be some debate on that question, but why would anyone use a program for that long, I mean, the state of the art in, 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 in computer systems has changed dramatically over the course of time. I mean, this was the, the best terminal you could get your hands on at Columbia when, when, when I learned Emacs. People, people really, really fought to, ah, uh, hold on. People really fought to get themselves uh, you know, time on, on a good VT100, you know, if you were stuck on one of the Lear Siegler Foxes, you were really, really unhappy. You know, there, 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 were, there were some other, you know, things that were considered decent, but you know, this was like a real state-of-the-art user interface for, for Emacs in 1983, and people would camp out to use them, and now, you know, if I owned one of these, it would probably be in, in storage, not in my apartment, yeah? So that Columbia, were you at Columbia at the time? Yes. <laughs> okay. How old I was there a decade later. I was I I, I I was a freshman, but anyway. Okay. So <laughs> best term, best so this is the well, best the thing you had for using for using Emacs at the time. And, and the OS I was using, and no, we can take questions later. Uh, the operating system I was using was TOPS 20 on a deck 20, and this part of this photograph is a prox mm -hmm. is one of those deck 20s, uh, you know, somewhat larger than my current computer, um, you know, not quite as elegant. No USB ports. Uh, no USB ports. I, I cannot say that I miss using the deck 20 for all my work. Um, you know, uh, aside from nostalgia and people who are really into retro computing, no one wants to use museum hardware. Um, some of you in this room looking around, I, I, I wrote this on the assumption, but I'm pretty sure we're not born in 1983. Um, okay, so why the hell would I still be using Emacs? Uh, in fact, I, I don't just use Emacs vaguely. Uh, I only recently stopped using it for reading email. Uh, and, and the reason I stopped using it for reading email was that, it that IMAP support and a couple of the, the built-in mail readers is just too crappy, and, and HTML support is a little bit too crappy. I will be discussing that towards the end of the talk. Uh, but anyway, we, we, we should fix that, but, and I certainly intend to use it for, for reading mail again. I keep my calendar and my phone book in Emacs, uh, although I'd like better local OS integration, it still seems to be the best way for me to do this stuff. Uh, I do all my development work in Emacs. Uh, I sometimes use Emacs for chat. If I'm doing chat, I generally do chat in Emacs. Uh, I wrote this presentation in Emacs. Uh, it was written in LaTeX. Uh, I wish I could browse the web and read papers in Emacs. We will discuss that topic more later. Uh, and I'm not the only lunatic, it turns out. Uh, there's another PhD student at Penn, who I won't name, who said to me that he really, you know, I asked him basically why was he content to use a particular revolting operating system on his laptop, and he said, I don't care, it's just a bootloader for Emacs. Um, so if you happen to take the, you, you see now the, the origins of this talk in a talk that I gave at Penn. If you take 
uh, CIS 500, uh, you know, Professor Benjamin Pierce spends most of the lectures running proof general inside Emacs uh, to show, you know, the proofs that he's doing inside Cook, inside proof general, inside Emacs. Uh, I have a, a completely apparently normal friend. He seems normal, at least. He is non-technical. He does not do, you know, he doesn't know how to program. He uses Emacs for his calendar, his to-do list, for editing text. He uses it for practically everything. I am giving this talk to a group called an <laughs> Emacs meetup. Why would anyone have an editor meetup? Um, I gave this or the original version of this talk to the Emacs club at Penn. Now, there are a lot of weird people in any computer science department, but at Penn, there is an Emacs club. So, I point out they also win the ACM programming contest quite often. But that's, that's, partially, that's partially because of the high concentration of PL people who are really, really goddamn brilliant. Partially because they like using Emacs. Um, there's an Emacs meetup here in a city where you could do so many things with your evening. There's an endless number of things. Name you could one. Name one. I, you know, I'm drawing a blank right now, but I'm sure there's something. There was a See, tonight. There you go. You could have gone to a Python meetup. You know, there are probably no less than a couple hundred live musical performances that are decent that you could be going to this evening. And here you are listening to a middle-aged man talk about a text editor. Stop. Raymond. Thank you. Yes. Yes. The, I, I, I suspect that, that that's not entirely perfect in directionality. But anyway, so there's an Emacs meet up here, you know, this implies cert, uh, some sort of fanaticism. No reason. <laughs> yes, in any case, why? You know, is it because Emacs is so easy to learn? No. Um, and, 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 you know, we all know, no, it is not easy to Only learn. Only because the tutorial's broken, sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and is it the prettiest editor you have ever used? Um, no. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, so anyway, uh, damn it. I'm getting keyboard bounce on this. Anyway, is it because Emacs is so well marketed? And, and, and everyone remembers that, in fact, Unipress tried to market Emacs. <laughs> and, 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 and everyone knows what a great commercial success Unipress is to this day, right? I, I, I don't think you can even find any information online anymore about what happened to them. It's that, you know, that it, it happened that long ago. Uh, on the other hand, I know people who, like, don't understand why you would want to touch this thing with a 10-foot pole. Uh, I've got a doctoral brother who uses an IDE. Uh, I have... Uh, you know, and, and, and I don't think he's ever even tried Emacs. Maybe he was told about it and he thought that the people telling him about it had to be nuts. Um, you know, th there are a couple of VI users in my lab. I, I respect them. You know, that's, it, 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 you know I'll, I'll talk about why I respect them in a little bit. Um, I, I have the occasional student who, who when, I've been, when I've been teaching, who's shown up for office hours and, and, and it has turned out that they were using something like, 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 you know, like, 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 like the, the built-in Microsoft text editor, uh, or, or, or maybe Notepad++, which is apparently some really extended version of Notepad, um, you know, and, and I've looked at them and wondered, you know, about, about them, but never mind, you know, there are all of these people out there that don't get why you would want to learn Emacs. So why? You know, is it just mental illness? And the answer is no, it's not just <laughs> mental illness. Um, well, for, first the, the uninteresting explanation, and now the clicker won't go forward. This is good. Ah, there we go. Uh, natural selection, and I'm quite serious about this. So everyone remembers using these, right? Uh, yes, several of us remember using these. The first machine that I used had... 
You, oh, that would have been luxury, sheer luxury. I I worked, uh, the, the gentleman mentions that he was working on a PDP-11 under Ristus. I was using a PDP-8 under OS-8, which was a substantially more constrained environment. Um, but, pardon? Anyway, we, you know, we, we couldn't afford an 11. You know, but anyway, so so this is this was up until the mid 1970s, the state of the art in uh, in, in in interfaces to a computer, and when you used a teletype, you used a line editor, because what else could you possibly use? And and in the late 1960s, glass TTYs started showing up which were a tremendous improvement because they saved paper, but you know, had the problem that you, know, you couldn't just you know, look back on the paper to see what you've been doing a couple of minutes before. But by the mid-1970s, this miraculous new thing happened. There were commercial ter serial terminals, uh, you know, full screen with positional cursor control, like the VT-52. And I don't think that, it's a, that, that what happened is a coincidence. <laughs> We had line editors. Night around by 1975, <clears throat> terminals are highly established. 1976 is the year Emacs shows up. 1976 is the year VI shows up. I, I do not see this as a coincidence at all. It was a response to the fact that the technology finally became possible. Um, now the thing is that there were at least hundreds of screen editors created during this period. You know, huge, huge numbers of them. And there are only two survivors. One is VI and one is Emacs. And I think that they probably survived not be, you know, necessarily, you know, it, 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 you know, because they're, they're, you know, they're not necessarily the best of the lot from that era, but they're probably you know, ones that people fell in love with so hard that they really, really insisted on keeping the things around. Um, they also have a structure. There, there were well, there were all sorts of interesting things from the era. You know, yes, people built structure editors. They built, they built, they built all sorts of things. But uh, so the question is, were the designers lucky or smart? Uh, there's no real way to answer this definitively. But I would argue that the designers of Emacs were pretty smart. Uh, it wasn't the first full screen editor they dealt with. They'd had some experience over the course of the pre previous year, couple of years, with some others, uh, including e uh, Tico's Control R mode, which is best forgotten, um, and, uh, and, and, and Stallman and, uh, and, and Steele and others began to improve Tico and, 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 and add macro packages to it. Uh, the macros evolved fast because every th the source to everything was available and people were constantly hacking on it. Uh, the community that it evolved in had very, very good hackers, and you know, and it and it changed very fast. But in some sense, it doesn't make any difference um, whether it was it was you know brilliance or the accident on hitting on the right design. It seems to be the right design. Um, it works really well. Um, you know, menus and mice are just too slow if you're trying to edit stuff. Uh, and, and as I'll mention, you know, that's what most of the people in this room do for a living. We, we write things for a living. Uh, and in Emacs, you can change text as fast as you think. Uh, the keyboard orientation is a serious feature uh, because the hands never leaving the keyboard means speed. You know, you can open and close files and, and, you know, and, and, and switch between buffers and do all sorts of things without ever having your cans move, leave the keyboard. Uh, there are huge numbers of features for programmers, you know, everything from, you know, from indentation to, you know, to, to compiling your code, to running your code, to debugging your code, you know, without having to have your hands move. Um, and, and you can do mass edits uh, without even doing terribly much programming thanks to the macro facility. Um, it is difficult to explain to people who have not used Emacs for a long time how you become, come to depend on it. You know, you're typing along and you type two letters transposed. 
And if you were using a normal editor, when you got halfway down the line and noticed that the fact that they were transposed, you would move your finger and you would, you know, and, and you'd click there and you'd hit delete a couple of times and type it. And in Emacs, you had control T. You know, I mean, this, this sort of thing is, is, is transformative, it's different. Uh, editing in GUIs, drags, uh, editing, uh, you know, when you have a keyboard from which you can control everything is really fast, and many of you I see in the audience are nodding your head. Those of you that are still awake, of course. Um, it's also extensible, which is really damn important. Tico was a terrible extension language, but the fact that it existed was more important than that it was good. And in fact, I would argue that in some sense that's the situation with ELISP today. Um, so Lisp ended up becoming a customary <laughs> extension language after you know, Tico died, GNU Emacs being the thing that everyone is used to using to this day with ELISP. Uh, extensible means that you get extensions. Uh, you can read your mail in Emacs, you can run the debugger in Emacs, you, can, you have IDEs in Emacs, you have refactoring tools in Emacs, and, and of course if you find yourself needing to do something in, to, to edit, and the people who had created the editor didn't think that you might want it. Unlike, you know, if you're using Xcode, you're, what can you do? You can't, you know, you, don't, you can't change the editor. You're using Emacs. You just, you know, you know, if a macro won't do, you write a little list of code, you throw it into your init, and there, you're done. Um, extensions are applications. And in some sense, what Emacs is, is a user interface for producing applications in which editing is part of the application. Um, so, but why write applications in a really mediocre language like Elisp? Um, extensions seem like a really weird thing to non-Emaxers. Why would you want to read your, and, and, and write your email inside of your text editor? And, and the answer is because it's natural. When you're writing email, you're editing text. And I find myself faced all the time these days when I'm, when I'm corresponding with people who are using Outlook as their, as their interface for, for reading and writing email, they're not really able to manipulate text well enough to give meaningful responses to your email. You know, you'd like them to do the standard, you know, quoting style that, 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 that old timers like, where they go through the email and they respond point by point to the eight things that you gave them. But instead, because they're writing in Outlook, or even worse, because they're writing inside an email application on their iPhone, um, all they can do is respond with two lines uh, of not particularly well-written text. So why would you want to, to write your email inside of a text editor so that you can write email and have it be reasonable, you know, reasonable, interesting, well-written text? Um, so I've heard people say this all the time to me over, over the decades. You know, Emacs is an operating system. You know, it's too big. It's, 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 it's too vast. You know, why would I want to run another operating system? And, and my reply to that is you say that it's an operating system like that. It's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. In fact, I would argue very strongly that it is not enough of an operating system, and towards the, uh, you know, towards the second half of my talk, I'm going to talk about why uh, I think that is and, and what we should do to make it more of an OS. Uh, it's more of a UI framework than a true operating system at the moment. Yeah. Um, here is a, a fine joke I just had to include. I hacked on NetBSD for, for a very, very long time, and when I redid the bootloader, I put this code in, which unfortunately someone without a sense of humor <laughs> removed a couple of years ago. Um, but, you know, at, 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 at some point, you know, they won't be looking and I'll put it back. Um, anyway, so yes, Emacs is a UI for, for hacking on large amounts of text. Why wouldn't you want to be able to cut and paste from other files with the keyboard while composing mail. You want to be able to write mail fast. You want your mail messages to look good. Why wouldn't you want to be able to edit and debug inside the same application? And this is an idea that is powerful enough that it got adopted by all of the world's IDEs. And you know, you run something like Xcode or, 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 or you know, the, the Microsoft Visual Blight Lime 
and, uh, and, 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 and you have an IDE now in which you can debug in the same application, but, but you can't reprogram uh, your, your IDE uh, when you're using something like Xcode or, or Visual C++ the way that you can Emacs. Um, why wouldn't you want to reprogram and extend your user interface, especially if you're a computer scientist? You know, and, and this is a point I want to make. Good computer professionals make tools for themselves to use. Now, there are, there are other professions that have a precedent on this. Machinists spend a large fraction of their time making tools for themselves modifying their tools in order to be able to achieve the kinds of part configurations that they want to be able to achieve them in a reasonable period of time. Good prof computer professionals do exactly the same thing. We know how to program. We find ourselves with tasks that are well suited towards writing a program in order to do them. It makes our lives better when we write improvements to our own tools or create new tools. So why wouldn't we spend a large fraction of our time doing it? In fact, you know, I know at least one person in the audience tonight has, as his job, he works on maintaining the programming environment for other programmers at a, at a big shop. This is a job people have, you know, tool smithing, maintaining, maintaining environments. And of course, programmers routinely do all of this sort of thing for themselves, even at places where there are other people who help them that way. Um, Emacs is portable and open source, and this is, this is a really significant feature. Non-portable programs die with the system that they, that they were born on. Um, closed source programs die with the company that built them. You know, over the years, I have seen editor after editor that, you know, that, you know I've had people tell me, oh, why aren't you using, you know, this random piece of code, and if I'd been using that, that editor, I would have had to stop using it many, many years ago when the company died or merged and the product was dropped or what have you. Um, but Emacs is open source, and once it was ported to C and Unix, you know, the only thing that can stop people from using Emacs is if they decide that they're no longer interested. The, the death of the system they're running on, the, the death of the company that provides the editor, these are not concerns. So the result of this is that you can learn a powerful system once and then use it for decades. Um, and this is a point that, a, a, a side point that I wanted to make, which is that professionals don't really care about pretty in their tools. How many people here have seen a restaurant kitchen or have worked inside one for any period of time? We have a couple of people. For those that, if you have a chance ever, peek inside one. That you will not find granite countertops. You will not find, you know, beautiful stained oak cabinets that were handmade. Um, in fact, you're not even going to find, you know, the, 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 the high-end expensive Viking range that, that your wealthy friend had installed in his house with the beautiful red enamel because they don't care about that. You know, if people that work in restaurant kitchens need to prepare hundreds of dinners in a night, and they don't have time to screw around. They don't care about pretty, they care about efficient. Efficient is the only thing that they care about. Computer scientists also need their tools to be efficient. Pretty is not a concern. Getting your work done quickly is a concern. You're not being paid, you know, to have a beautiful experience. You're being paid to get something out the door. Um, and editing text is what computer scientists do for a living. And we do only two things. We read text, we write text. And in fact, no one pays us to read if we're not then writing something after we've read up on how to do it. So we edit text for a living, and, and whether it's documentation or web pages or software, or systems administration utilities or what have you. We spend all of our days editing text. So your productivity as a programmer, as a systems administrator, et cetera, depends on how efficiently you edit text. So it shouldn't be surprising that we care most about the efficiency of the tool with which we edit text and, and a whole lot less about whether it has really pretty icons that, that were done you know, in a vector drawing program and have nice blended shading on them or what have you. And animations. And animations. Yes, yes. That's, that is a good point. Without animations, what can you do? Anyway, 
Endurance is also a feature here. To be productive, you have to learn how to use your editor well. It is not enough just to, you know, I mean, if, if you didn't need to use it well, you know, then, then, you know, then certainly, you know, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't uh, Notepad be enough for writing large pieces of software? Um, and I've had to learn just one editor well for most of my career. Um, you know, I've been able to use it for over 30 years. It'll probably be around for another 30 years until I drop dead. Uh, probably I'll drop dead before another 30 years pass, but never mind. Um, so it's okay that, uh, that, that, that it takes a long time to learn how to use it because there's enough time, if you can use the thing for decades, for the investment to pay off. Uh, it took me a couple of weeks to get really good with Emacs, uh, maybe a month before I was really sailing without thinking about it. But over the last several decades, it saved me a few minutes to sometimes a couple of hours every single day of my life. This is an amazing return on investment. You know, this is, this is, you know, this is a fine, fine thing. So why has Emacs survived? It's because it's a great editor that you can practically live in. You can do everything inside it. Uh, you can extend it. You can customize it. So if it doesn't do something you want, you can make it do it. Uh, you will never have to stop using it because it's open source and, and can be ported to almost anything. And if you're a computer professional, that's irresistible. And that's why there are fanatics in this world. And that's why we find ourselves at an Emacs meetup. So, what could result in Emacs dying? Uh, failing to adapt, I think. Uh, now, Emacs has, to, to, for the most part, actually adapted. Uh, it's changed significantly over its 38-year lifespan. It has a much improved extension language over what it started with. It now has Windows system support. No one runs Emacs on a VT100 anymore. People run Emacs Windows inside their GUI, sometimes inside the terminal emulator in their GUI because they're running over SSH or what have you. But, but you know, mostly people run, you know, run direct Windows in their GUI. It's got vast numbers of new modes. It's got, you know, it can do networking. It can do all sorts of things it couldn't do before. But I claim it needs to go further. Uh, the extension language is still mediocre. And this has become an increasing problem because people want to be able to write larger and more interesting applications in it, and the extension language is kind of crappy. Um, uh, the, what do you mean by extension language? You mean ELISP? I mean ELISP. Um, the word that should not be mentioned. ELISP is a fine word. It's, 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 Don't you think that common LISP support, though, is taking it a little bit it, further? We'll get to this. Um, we need better support for refactoring and, 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 and modern programming uh, tasks. Um, this is doable, we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. It's not enough of an operating system in my opinion. In particular, the threading sucks. We'll talk about that. Um, it's not enough of an operating system because I still need to leave it here and there, which is a problem. And I think it needs more integration with things like personal information <laughs> managers and other kinds of protocols that people care about today. We'll get to that briefly. So anyway, suggestions on future-proofing Emacs. So anyway, uh, Tico was not really a pretty language. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, this cut off, it goes on a little bit further over there. <laughs> uh, does, does, now, how many people in the room can tell me what this Tico code does? It's part of the correction for the Y2K problem. No. <laughs> that was a good guess, though. This, uh, this Tico code calculates the digits of pi. <laughs> and it should be obvious to anyone looking at it that it calculates the digits of pi. Tico was, is, is such an awful language that, that a popular game apparently used to be guessing what someone's name would do. <laughs> is entered in as a Tico program. <laughs> and so ELISP, in spite of, 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 of the problems that it's got, was a fairly big improvement. <laughs> but unfortunately, ELISP still, more, still kind of sucks. Uh, some improvements have been made to ELISP of late. It finally has lexical scope. If you ask for it, uh, if you ask for it, um, but on the other hand, the, API, the legacy Emacs APIs, if you've done any hacking in, in Emacs, are kind of awful. 
stuff has accreted, you know, over the years without any rational design on, on all sorts of stuff. There are no real modules, there are no namespaces. Um, this is a serious problem. There's no ah, threading. Ah, the lack of threading ah. is actually an issue. I don't want, as I'll get to, I don't want necessarily the most general threading on Earth. But, 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 I, but what we've got right now is, is way insufficient. It's not really a good lisp by modern standards. Right. Which um, is why it's a common lisp. Well, anyway, I think that it, should, it needs to be replaced. Because I mean, when I program Emacs, I program the common lisp. Ooh, yes, but anyway, my, my solution to this is to, is to build a better lisp in parallel. And what do I mean by this? Yeah. So there are lots and lots of people out there. I'll give a, 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 an example, which isn't really quite on, on, you know, on point, and then, and, then, and then move to what I really mean. There are lots of people out there now that are using languages that are based on the JVM that are not Java. Uh, and many of them are much, much better than Java. In fact, it's difficult to imagine one that anyone would use that would be worse than Java. <laughs> um, but anyway, there, there are a number of, of languages, and they can take advantage of the Java infrastructure by being based on the JVM without having to throw all of that infrastructure out. And you can argue whether this is a good idea or a bad idea, but for a lot of people, this has been very appealing. I would argue that we have a perfectly good language runtime inside the Emacs interpreter. Is that true? It's true to a first approximation. Okay. I would not call it the best language runtime, but it's, it's, it's good enough. Okay. There's all of this code that runs in this runtime already. Uh, the runtime provides lots and lots of data structures, uh, like buffers that one wants in one's editor. One could build a second list in parallel that use the same runtime. And unlike the JVM situation, one is allowed to improve the runtime <laughs> or add extra features to it, while one, it, so long as it doesn't break the old code, while one is improving the system. I, I would argue that this is probably a profitable way to go. One could design a, a new Lisp that had actual modules, namespaces, etc. Uh, that had access to the other Lisp's namespace and could call into it, uh, and that could provide new non-legacy, non-revolting APIs for, for, for doing all of the things that Emacs provides, and, and that would from the start have support for lexical scoping and, and more modern common Lisp style features, etc. You, you keep pointing so in my general direction. No, later, you, later I'll rant. Yes. Why do you think that this is better than using common lisp? I mean, one of the issues I have. I'm not saying people, common lisp is necessarily a bad idea. Okay, because I just have a problem. People keep inventing new lisps. It just fractures the community and fragments. Uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm somewhat agnostic about that, but we can yell about it during the question period. I assume I'll have time for questions. Uh, anyway, uh, second thing. Um, Better tools inside Emacs for the programmer. Uh, Eclipse, Xcode, etc. Are, are aware of all the symbols in your program. There are some tools inside Emacs, like, like CEdit and what have you, that, that have those capabilities, but they're kind of ad hoc and not particularly great. We need better. Uh, Xcode and some of the other things here now use LLVM's tools to provide there are code parsing and code walking and symbol table access, and there's no reason that Emacs couldn't do, and that would eliminate the need to try to reinvent the square wheel when there are fine square wheels available for purchase on the open market. Um, I think that this is probably the most profitable line for people to, to go that way in, and it would make it a whole lot easier to build refactoring tools for things like C++, uh, and 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 you know and 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 things like symbol completion and what have you, um, by actually making use of, of of the actual compiler infrastructure, a better extension language would also help a lot here. Um, trying to build tools for some of this stuff in Elisp is a little bit painful. Um, threading. Yeah. <clears throat> this has been an irritant for me for years. Emacs blocks <laughs> all windows when you are doing computation in any window. It's an operating system, but it's not enough of an operating system. I myself find, you know, will run three or more instances of Emacs on my desktop to get around this. I'm 
you know, I'm slurping in my email and I can't do something else at the same time because it's often space slurping in my email. It's it's going through and it's doing some, you know, it wants to do some sort of extended computation. I can't go into another window and do anything else at the same time. This Why is aren't irritating. You running compilation windows? Pardon? Why aren't you running named compile mode windows? Uh, even if I have a name compile mode window, if you're if you're in something like news and it's going off and doing something, it blocks you. It, if it's doing an extended computation and doing a lot of file I/O and talking to the network, it blocks you. Okay. There's not more than one. Sorry. There's not more than one thread there. Or executing a regular expression over a large buffer over and over again. I just want to go to another buffer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it would be nice to have that capability. Um, and, and, and right now, you know, you don't have it, and it means that some of us end up running multiple Emacs instances in spite of the fact that really for maximum fun you only want to run one Emacs instance. My vague thought on this, and people have been working on this half-heartedly for years, is maybe the solution is to bind threads to buffers and, and to have buffer and thread local um, data and to only need to lock global data, and there isn't that much global data that you're, that you're accessing typically, so the performance hit is not going to be particularly large, even though... The locks, I don't think, will be the problem. I think the problem you have is you're talking about threads, which inherently to be useful, have to have a very limited stack size, and you're talking language on the list, that burns... Not if you're using spaghetti stacks, well, or something similar. Yeah. Um, you do not need you, you to use, right. you do not need to use statically allocated stacks. You can use... Uh, you can allocate stacks on the heap. There are all sorts of, of mechanisms for doing this. Is that? It's not currently set up for that, but I've been proposing constructing a new language possibly <laughs> anyway. Um, so, Barry, I'm confused by this. Yes. Because I've run commonless processes for hours doing intense computations. As, as inferiors? Yeah. Yes. Right. It's yeah, it's oh, not locking. Yeah, I'm, oh, okay, okay. If so you're running something inside Elis, oh, it. Okay. it blocks. I got it. Yes, you so, can you can run you can run stuff forever in a subprocess. So here, here's a stupid yeah. suggestion: just build a proper conduit to an inferior ELISP yeah, interpreter. Exactly. Right. Or, I mean, well, just, but 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 the problem then is, is but the problem then is that you want to share data between them. Uh, right. And, I said that's what that's what my okay. you know, proper conduit. But it, it's, they're all the same. They're all the superficial. Anyway, <laughs> um, so let's see. My number one problem however these days, and this is a very serious one, is I find myself leaving Emacs more and more, and this is irritating. I leave Emacs mostly to browse the web or to view HTML emails, and in fact these days I get so much HTML email. Yes, J.I. is growling, and, and he should be, but, but it, you know, we don't have control over, over other people's behavior as much as we would like. You know, someday when I am dictator, uh, many of you will, will not may, may be happy, and many of you may be extremely unhappy. <laughs> but, but, but we don't really have the ability to do that sort of thing right now. Um, so my solution is, again, give in to the operating system impulse and embed WebKit inside Emacs. Well, you want to get a few more system calls to go before it can do everything that Unix does. Well, it, it can al it, it, Emacs can already run many system calls, but that's not the point. Uh, HTML rendering is an extremely specialized, difficult. People have tried building HTML renderers inside Emacs, and it's it's just too much work keeping up with it. Why bother keeping up with it when there are people that are maintaining HTML rendering libraries that you can just use? Um, so my notion is you render pages directly in Emacs windows. The UI is managed by Emacs. The buffer would be, sh it would be shared between Emacs and WebKit. So you could do things like eye searching in web pages, copying regions from web pages and pasting them into emails and such. I have seen people look at doing WebKit by running sub-processes where which render into into windows that are not really part of Emacs and you don't really get that that way. I think you really have to bite the bullet and swallow it. And then besides this will return us to e the old days where Emacs was too large and 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 took up most of the resources on the machine. You know, nowadays people say 
Nowadays, people say 8 megs and constantly swapping. No, of course you're not constantly swapping. Not when you have gigabytes and gigabytes of main memory. But with, with, by bringing WebKit in, we can get ourselves back to the point where Emacs is actually using most of the machine's resources again, which I think is important. That's okay. Now we'll get a, that's okay. Now we'll get a computer to build, a company to build a thing that just runs Emacs and nothing but Emacs. We'll see. Um, anyway. Uh, similarly, I, I really want a PDF viewer and, and inside, and I want to be able to walk the PDF and cut and paste from it and put it into other things. Uh, I, I spend a lot of my time writing documents which are going to end up as PDFs, and I want to view them in parallel. I spend other parts of my time reading people's papers and trying to quote from them or, or things like that. This would be a pleasant thing to do. Um, I'd love to be able to eye search through a PDF. Uh, you know, in fact, I'd love for someone to just put regular expression search into Chrome. Why is it that no web browser so has regular? Answer that. I, it, it, during the during the question and answer. Um, yes. It, it, yeah, I won't I, like the answer. I'm sure I won't like the answer. <laughs> anyway, with embedded WebKit, embedded PDF viewing, I may never le need to leave Emacs anymore, and that would be pleasant. Uh, you know, return to the way things were a few years ago, you know, that'll, uh, that'll be good. Um, I'd also like better integration with certain sorts of modern tools. I want the calendar modes to talk CalDAV. Uh, I, I want the mail readers to really do IMAP and because, you know, the average person now has many different mail stores. And the thing that drove me off of reading my mail in Emacs was the fact that a, I need to be able to read it on the phone, and I needed to be able to read it on several different computers, which means IMAP is the right thing. Um, you know, I, I, I really want, you know, right now I have an ad hoc contacts mode, and it's my fault for not having written card DAV support right. for it, but, but, but you know, it, it, it would be useful to have something like that. So basically this goes back to, to the same request for more integration uh, to be more of an operating system and, and, and to provide less excuses to leave the thing. Um, I suppose fewer excuses. Yes, yes. I, I could tell that there was someone in the audience. I could feel that someone in the audience was upset when I said it. wasn't the only one. There you go. Um, anyway, a quick rant about keyboards before we get to the end of this discussion. Now, now, this is an older Mac keyboard. And you will notice that we have control, option, and command on both sides of the keyboard. Now, I know there are a lot of people here who, because they got used to control being there in, in the depths of time, prefer control there. But I actually like being able to touch type all my control keys, and I like having all my shift keys and control keys symmetric on both sides of the keyboard. And if you buy even a relatively crappy PC keyboard, you mostly have that these days. However, uh, on a Mac, modern Mac keyboards have removed the control key <laughs> from the right side of the keyboard. And, 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 and this inspired me recently to get even more broadly upset. So many of you probably cannot read this very well. Yes. But this is a Space Cadet keyboard. A proper keyboard. It's actually not literally a Space Cadet keyboard. I believe this is a Symbolics keyboard. But it's close enough to a Space Cadet keyboard. This is a keyboard that is actually built for programmers. Now, I spend a bunch of my time using systems in which Unicode math symbols turn out to be very, very helpful things to have around. Uh, and it's kind of weird that we as programmers are restricted to a vocabulary based on what you could fit in a seven-bit code <laughs> in the mid-1960s. You know, being able to do for all and, 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 and there exists and, and having various kinds of arrows is kind of nice. Having Greek letters around is kind of nice. On this keyboard, of course, you press Greek or front or top, and you get a very, very wide variety of keys. If you want an uppercase lambda, you hit Greek shift L, and you get an uppercase lambda, like you should. That's right. What are the Roman numerals do? Uh, I, I, I think those were, were used for basically for selecting UI things. If you had a menu pop up 
the first four things always corresponded to the first four Roman numerals. People turned out not to use that much, so it got dropped from later symbolics keyboards. Um, th th this keyboard is way over the top. I don't necessarily want this far over the top, though. Though I don't mind having super, you know, super hyper and, and hyper and a proper meta key, and and maybe and maybe a proper. I'd like a proper compose key so I can hit equals and slash and have that be not equals. So so I don't quite have to do everything off the keyboard. But but I want a keyboard somewhat like this. And, and I've been thinking recently, you know, we finally live in an era where you can, where you can kickstart hardware projects. Right. And, and, and so I've been vaguely thinking of doing that. How many of you are crazy enough that if a keyboard like, yes, yeah, several of you. Make my money. <laughs> Make my money. Just with a track point money. Uh, uh, you know, if you, can, if you can find me a supplier for the component, uh, and it'll work just soldered onto a motherboard, then, then, then sure, a track point would be fine. Or if the ten of you want, I have ten uh, Model M keyboards, IBMs. Well, <laughs> that's not enough to supply a, a, a large number of people. But I know there are people here who really, really love the Buckling Spring keyboard. Unfortunately, I think to this day, there's, there, you still can't get those keys commercially. You, 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 can, get you can get the keyboards commercially. Yes. But you cannot get the keys. Because commercial. they're not individual keys, they're molded as a, as a whole thing. Yeah, well, anyway. Uh, yes. Ask me later. Yes. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, I'm getting towards the end of the talk, and then we can have free form ranting. Um, <laughs> so, question always comes when might Emacs die? And, and, and it will inevitably die at no! some point. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing lives forever. Um, you know, Keyboard, maybe when keyboards cease to be the fastest way to enter text, maybe you know, when fast. we have direct interfaces to the yeah. machine. Yeah, uh, although at that point, you know, you Max still want... Yeah. Jay, please. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. Uh, even, even then, though, you'll want multiple buffers. You'll want programmability. So maybe that's just a new input mode. Uh, even after we directly interface our brains to the things. I, I don't really know when it will die. It will die at some point. Um, but, if we're, but if we're reasonably careful about tending it and making sure that it, it remains modern and can do modern things, that's my point about things like WebKit, it will continue to get users and it will continue to have lots of active users into the indefinite future. Anyway, time for questions. I think this is my last slide. Yes. First yeah! Of all, <laughs> and I probably should be repeating the question so that they'll be audible, but yes. Well, I just wanted to throw in a keyboard suggestion. I've loved, and I've used for over 10 years, the Kinesis Advantage, where you have the control keys on your thumbs. That's wonderful for Emacs because now you don't get the carpal tunnel, you don't have to keep on I actually, I've, I have never, the only times that I, so the, the, the point was about using about about keyboards specifically for Emacs users, perhaps with control keys placed under the thumbs. Um, for myself, I've never really had a problem except when I have had keyboards higher than than my wrist level. If I always keep the keyboard below wrist level, I'm okay. And 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 the two times I've had trouble were when I tried using a wrist rest, which was a, one of the stupidest inventions ever because they don't make your life better, they make your life worse. And, and when I had to spend three months during a trading floor rollout in Midtown, typing in under really, really suboptimal conditions with my wrists you know, bent like that, um, which you know, caused me to, to briefly get tendonitis issues. I don't really have the problem so long as I don't have a lot of reach that I've got to do and, and having uh, and having control keys and what have you on both sides is generally sufficient for that. Uh, I also remember to take my watch off while I'm typing. I find I get I get it gets painful. Sure. This is can very easily get. Well, we can have all sorts of discussions. But anyway, Jay, uh, I think that Ramon had a question. Yeah, I have a two quick comments. One is that um, uh, there is a, there is actually an IDE for Emacs that does make it more. C edit. There, I believe, is a, is what it's called. Yeah, I don't think it's yet. Well, we had this was the talk we had on Facebook the discussion that there there are a couple there are a couple of IDEs but none of the none of the ones that are out there really parse things like C plus plus as well as uh, as as uh, as as LLVM parses C plus plus as it turns out a compiler has to be able to parse it perfectly <laughs> yeah, 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 by yeah, coincidence. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, J.I. So, uh, having been forced occasionally to use an ID and then forgotten everything about both Eclipse and MediJ, uh, my main problem is not so much, oh, it's not Emacs. I don't care if it's the particular binary. What I care about is the user interface. I want to be able to type Control S or Meta S and get my incremental uh, regular expression. I have, well, I know why. I've, I've asked once the one of the Chrome developers, why don't you people put regular expression search in a bloody search thing? Oh, nobody else has complained. Nobody ever suggested this. Well, I'm. <laughs> the first instance well, of a complaint about this first. that I see that I saw was a talk by Rob Pike something like 16 years ago where he complained that the browsers didn't have regular expression search. Yeah, he's not but, the first one I and, and, but, but Rob is nobody, clearly. Nobody, <laughs> nobody has complained. Clearly, 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 Rob does not work for the same company that makes Crow. Crow. Yes, yes, yes. But, but, but anyway, I'd like all of these. I, I would love it if, if the tool makers did better with all of this. But for now, since I want to be able to browse the web inside Emacs anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll worry more about that, but yes, Jay. Okay, th th this weekend for the first time I looked at something called JavaScript. <laughs> Never, no, no, you're no, you're no, one no. of the last people to the, uh, to the, I'll, I'll to the party. I'll tell you because of Nadine Kobesi's uh, mini lock, um, which I'm a strong supporter of. And um, in the first place, I've heard such comments as, well, it's just a badly constructed, ordinary computer programming language. First of all, I don't like the term programming language. They're programming systems. And as a matter of fact, as far as I could tell, all the criticisms are right. However, what JavaScript is not critically um, is, a, is a programming language. It, it actually is. Are we, is this Emacs related? It is. Okay. <laughs> it's something, it's, it took me, first thing I saw was that it's impossible to read and write a file by default. But now in JavaScript, because it's in the browser, and that would be a security violation, blah, blah, blah. And then, so there are these things, these improvements, these, these environments, there's Rhino, and there's Node.js. And guess what? It's uninteresting as a language. Uh, I should have been allowed to do it with Lisp um, syntax, which is what he wanted to do. And um, what makes it completely different is the execution of the JavaScript program, the default is it listens on arbitrary many, let's call them ports, and then it does something, and everything by default is, quote, asynchronous. And that's a big difference from, say, C. Yeah, you can write servers in C. It's a big difference from even common Lisp. It's a big difference from basic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the ELISP, Runtime is a catastrophe as you've devoted. So, you know, th that's it. I mean, I mean, you've got to take so you some asynchronous you things seriously. It's just a repetition of what you said. It's your complaint about threading, but it really struck me because I'm studying it and I'm thinking, you know, nobody told me how different this system was from C basic and Lisp. All look the same. And then JavaScript stands over here. Okay. Just one dimension. Next comment. Yes. So when I was in the top twenty developer group at DAC, uh, that San Diego in the early eighties, we're not worthy. Junior number. You're all very cute. I was twenty. So. Um, I tried to do an asynchronous command interface inside of the command JSIS. Right. And the problem. I miss command JSIS to yes, this day. It's there. That, well, so there was a re-implementation at... Yeah, the sort. Um, yes, there is a re-implementation. It was for MM, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, but the thing is that it, it was, even though we had windowing capability that we didn't ever release, but um, it was very hard to manage the return of asynchronous calls. I wanted to have every command be its own. Right. Not, not this background thing from Linux, but sort of this, it takes an environment, and I could you know, use an uh, extensions of DCL to push them together like they do with the TV with a stupid, you know, maybe. But there was no way to really make it usable for users. The problem we had is that the people in the room could use it, and we, the technical writers are like, no, <laughs> we can't describe it, let alone use it, let alone tell customers how to use it. 
So I mean, that's, that's one of the problems is, is the, the the coming back. You mean th for using a for having a synchronous it's, it's at the. At well, that's the, well, that's one of the reasons for for having multiple threads around because people will understand how to program. No, but but after that is, is the how to what to do when all the threads come back. Well, you know that though. That, 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 I'm, I'm not saying you can't solve this tree model. It's just that's what yes. I'm around to. I, I just want to compliment you. You really helpful. You, you asked about Chrome not having very good expression searching. I mean, I'd be frustrated at anything that doesn't have very good expression searching. But you really hit the nail on the head. Emacs is for people who live in an editor and write text. That's where regular expression searching actually makes the most sense. You're not just searching. You're searching for a particular pattern to make changes to it. So browsers weren't really created as composition engines. We, they've been extended to do that, just like Emacs has been extended. Well, they were, they were supposed to be. But it's a composition engine that really makes sense with regular expression searching fundamentally. I think yeah. So By I the way, I, I know some writers who use Emacs. You know, and are not wow. and are not programmers. Not not an enormous number. Like of the guy wrote the license. Uh, well, Moglin. I mean, like that's Moglin, how he got Moglin, involved Moglin, with. Moglin, Moglin, Moglin. Moglin. I believe I've been. Moglin. Moglin. Okay, so he is a programmer, or at least did a professional. Well, but but there are there are there are but but you know the the point is yes if you are, you know Emacs is for people who are generating and modifying content, especially you know through as text. Is there any other? I mean, I'm not even aware of any other application of people or that what did you swear your text other than BI or BIM. Right. Yeah, no, by the way, I, I tell my students when when I've 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 taught, you know, intro to Unix and, and Linux students and I and you know, intro programming students, I've told told them I don't care if you pick Emacs or VI, but you have to pick one of them. <laughs> and the reason and the reason that you have to pick one of them is because you need to have a text editing environment that you will be comfortable in for a very long time to come. And and some people and some people get it and some people don't. I as I said, I've I've had students, you know, see I've had seniors at Penn taking the operating systems class come to me and, and and they were editing their their you know their their project, which was a shell for Unix, in Notepad plus plus on Windows. Wow. And I I I have attempted to, to use the clue stick on them, but it has not actually worked. The clue by four, the the, the LART, etc. But but it for some people it doesn't take. But I think those people don't end up really as top notch professional programmers in the end. Um, next question, J I. So uh, when when you mentioned JavaScript, I thought you were going to mention something else, which is how JavaScript is intimately uh, connected to the DOM. And yes. This is actually yes, something that that Emacs. I restrained that, right? myself. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's related to, to, yeah. the, to the talk, because one of the things that actually struck me so hard, and it's also related to the statement about structure editors. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about the DOM before this weekend. I guess I've heard the thing. I looked at it. Of course. And here's, here's something I just thought of. Every UI naturally extends to become an OS if it's used by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that with the browser. We've seen that with Emacs. And so one should just admit that's the case, and one should make sure, I'm just going to repeat again and again, it's got to be asynchronous. What the hell is the difference between the DOM and the Unix directory of files? Nothing well, at the no, correct no, level of abstraction except one's more inconvenient. You knew other. about the DOM, Jay. The DOM is like the presentation system on small. So it's right, like, yes, so I mentioned, so I mentioned, so I mentioned, so I mentioned the, so the structure. HTML is more like the directory structure. Yeah, sure. The DOM is the presentation system. Yes. Yes, but none of them were designed. But none of them were designed kind of, that way in each Well, no, 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 no. You're, you're, there, is, there is a problem with that sentence. None okay. of them were designed. But, but, <laughs> me, me, and I mean, that, I mean that very seriously. The whole system accreted right. at, from a series of last-minute necessities. Right. Even JavaScript itself. Even Emacs. But, 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 but we are drifting away from Emacs. No, no, but this is critical. The synergy of Emacs, I think, is, is you touched on it. And I think that's kind of related to some of these other little discussions, yeah. is that the synergy between a text editor that's designed for writing code fundamentally of any kind and a language that is built in, in which you use that coding ability to extend the language, I mean the editor, yeah. um, they work together. If you're going to be writing code, you need a text editor currently. You know, right. And if you're going to be using a text editor, it's really handy to be writing code. So I, I would argue it's not so much whether it's Lisp or even something like JavaScript or whatever. If it's a powerful enough language that you can handle with doing text, I, I think that at that point, if it's just, Powerful editor and a powerful enough uh, language integrated with it, 
it is an Emacs, even if it's not the Emacs, just as we had when I started with yeah. Emacs. Well, there, there are people who have built Emacs-like systems on top of Haskell at this point. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there have been, and there have been, I, I remember Lugaru had something, had a commercial Emacs license. Yeah, that would be close to Emacs. You know, yeah, Lugaru was one of the early PC vendors. Yeah, they had, they had an Emacs. They had an HP200 LX. They had, they they had a they had a an extension language that was very very different C. from Lisp. It was it was C like yeah, but 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 at this point, I think people are used to to Lisp like languages, so I think that that's a logical thing to do. Although one could imagine, you know, younger people who are who are very very addicted to JavaScript. <coughs> I was I, I restrained myself from hurling, uh, wanting wanting it, well. It has it, it does have certain interesting features. JavaScript is a prototype inheritance language like self, which is kind of interesting just from a computer science point. Interesting, but but anyway, um, more questions. Yeah, no, I have a comment on. So I just wanted to respond to something that you and you've said. Is that I actually one of the things I like about Emacs is because I don't feel like metadata text. I'm able to build abstractions over the text. So in Lisp, I'm actually navigating S expressions. I'm not editing text, um, which is actually a very fundamental thing about the programmable editor, because you can actually build these, these levels of abstraction. And that, that's what gives you the real power. I mean, the ability for me to, to control meta F and to jump to the end of X expression is really powerful. You know, and in some other language, it could be jump to the end of the function or whatever. It doesn't, you know, but the thing is that I'm building layers of abstraction over the text. Right, well, that's the, the synergy allows you. Well, it's like in the programmable aspect of it. I mean, I, I remember when Unix was first coming out, people like you would try to tell me how great it was because you could connect these things up. I'm like, just write an application. But it's that ability to put little things together yeah. in, in new ways that is yeah. so fundamentally important about it. That, that oh, yeah, to this, to this day, the command line, I, I, I find myself doing things at the command line that other people seem to, to not be able to do after hours and hours and hours by throwing together a short pipeline. Yes. Um, so, can we make Emacs more accessible? <laughs> to who? Oh, yeah. um, the marginal users who might try it and go away. I'm I'm not as concerned about them, and and I'll tell you why. Uh, I've watched, for example, what has happened in the Linux community, where the attempt to make GNOME or GNOME or however it's pronounced into a more accessible system, also done by people who didn't really understand accessibility very well, um, has rendered it not useful for the naive user or the sophisticated user. Um, Emacs is very much a system for sophisticated users. It's a system for people who are probably going to spend their lives editing text, for whom the investment of a couple of weeks to really, really learn the tool is going to pay off over the course of decades. And I would be very hesitant to try to do anything that might jeopardize that part of the community uh, in order to make things more useful for people who might not get why they want it in the first place. Emacs is at no risk of dying, I mean, as, as things no, but stand. I think, I think to his point that education is a really important thing. And I've yeah. seen people well, move away from... down Emacs and make the users... Smart. Well, certainly the tutorial system should probably should be, be updated. Be, well, when I complained about it, yeah. like how many years ago to Richard's <coughs> course, his answer was the obvious one. Salzburger, come on, just fix it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So. But like this meetup would be a wonderful place to actually teach. Actually, yes. that would be well that. worthwhile. We could write that. the tutorial. Yeah. Have I, 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 to rewrite. I, I will say this: I yeah. learned yeah. Emacs. I learned Emacs off the tutorial. The tutorial was not very different than it is today. It's missing a few parts. I think it's pretty good in parts. But it's missing a few critical things. It is certainly missing a few very, very useful features. Absolutely. And people aren't in the mindset of a programmable editor, you know, they're just not used yeah. to that. Well that is that is why I've I've when I've I've when I've taught my yeah. intro to Unix and Linux class, I've I've spent a couple of, of weeks on Emacs. Because you have to show the first thing to do I've found always is to show someone something like like vastly refactoring a piece of code by but with, with a couple of small macros and then saying to them, Can you do this? in Notepad, and, and they inevitably say to themselves, hmm, maybe there is a reason I should care about this. Um, but, but, you know, and, and it, 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 certainly, it certainly is the case that 
not everyone gets it, but a lot of people get it. The real problem to me, though, at this point, is that I am having trouble using it for all the things that I would like to use it for. The fact that I, as a fanatic, can't really use it for my email at the moment. It needs to get with the times. This bothers me. It needs to get with the times. Yes, yes, it needs. It needs to have. You know, it needs better See, tools. I don't than it's think that's going to happen. You know, all these people keep insisting on text emails rather than HTML emails. <laughs> See, I'm actually the opposite one. I'm the one who, like, you send me a text email, and I'm going to reply with an HTML email. Because I like fonts, and I like colors, and I like... Well, HTML. no, but that's fine. My, my problem... My problem is that all of the people using HTML emails talk post only, including all of the previous stuff. They don't read the email carefully, and they don't answer two-thirds of your questions because they're not used to a process for writing that involves it. If you edited the HTML email inside an Emacs mode and, uh, and, 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 and actually interspersed your answers nicely and maybe included a nice diagram or two, that would be a fine thing. But people are not doing that with their HTML email. So can I make one last comment? Sure. It's really funny. I worked on a symbolic for three years when I was an undergraduate. And it was the most amazing environment I've ever worked in. Um, and it was um, way ahead of its time. Um, and uh, one of the things I loved about it is that they actually had all these shifty keys, which gave you access to a whole bunch of things, including kind of, you know, the super key, the hyper key. And the only complaint I had about that is that somebody, at some point in time, actually gave a key binding to control meta shift hyper X. Yes, that's <laughs> This is what your nose is for. <laughs> this is why you have a nose. There was a guy working on linear B and other people like that. Yeah. Well, I just remember like going through these All right. Any questions from people who have not asked questions so far? Yes. Something that troubles me when you said that the pro the runtime for Emacs is okay, and then you say, oh, but except the threading. Yes. Uh, you didn't even mention garbage collection. Uh, I'm okay with the garbage collection. Well, that's one of the things that that's one of the places you can hang. Right. You can't hang forever. You can yes, you're correct. The garbage collector, in order to make, in order to do the sort of thing that I'm talking about, probably has to get made a little bit thread aware. Okay. Though you can you can pu you can pull, however, garbage collectors that will do that off the shelf at this point, so, and they're so, even GPL. So, and and I'm just really surprised that you, you say you, you teach operating systems. I uh, no, I've 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 helped teach operating systems. I've not I, been. I, I just can't see the runtime. You know, the the runtime system that Emacs still feels to me. At, for a for a runtime system, yeah. feels to me like your DOM or your yeah, it's not uh, You know, it's 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 good enough for the moment. And if one wants to do it, it you know, you could rewrite it completely. Um, however, I think if you rewrote it completely, you would have trouble keeping the existing users. Uh, you need to support the existing code, which means you need to support the existing ELISP, which means that incremental changes are a smarter way to make. To, to get from point A to point B than, than rewrites. And, and uh, I, there are all sorts of things I would like. You know, I mean, if one had, was many years down the line off of this, you know, LLVM and things like it are getting very good. You know, j you can build JITs really easy in LLVM. You could slurp the LLVM stuff in, and you could JIT your ELISP or, or your, your successor to ELISP. You certainly could not have you with that. Why not? You know, uh, Emacs people, you know, Meta X Pony, you know, why not? Um, anyway, uh, any, any more questions at the moment, or should we, uh, or, or, or should we wind, start winding down? Okay, well, thank you very much for having me.